this is going to be a different campaign. I think, I think Ed and, and those of them who have talked to and sort of solicited advice politically um, have found that I'm a little bit different. And maybe you guys might think that too, but I, I, I don't want to take the conventional approach. I want to take this from a, a real approach and be honest. And I think, quite frankly, that shows a big distinction between me and my opponent. Um, for those of you who are paying attention, I think that's everyone in this room knows, we want two more years of Doug Ray. And that's no. And I don't think we do. And I think, it, I think, quite frankly, it's embarrassing that in 2008, we had no one going up against him in this community. And that was part of what drove me to make this decision. Um, that we came to this decision quite a while ago. Uh, Steve and I were on a hike with our kids up in the Bear Rock Mountain. And it feels like it was five years ago, but it was actually about a, more than a year ago. And uh, I said, I think I'm going to run against Doug Redley. And uh, Steve is an attorney, and very thoughtful. He's really one of the smartest people I know, uh, and I'm very fortunate to have him as my treasurer. And uh, without uh, hesitation, he said, I'm with you. Let's do it. And uh, I tell you what, I have, that's been something he always laughs when I say uh, you know, that he was an inspiration for me, or that I say he's the one of the smartest guys I know. Um, but it's very true, and it's something that I think about quite often that gets me through those times when you feel like, why are you doing this? Uh, this is really what you want to do with your time. And, and so his encouragement is, uh, is something very important to me. Um, so we have all our roles that we play in life, and, and in this election, it's going to be about choices. It's, it's going to likely be a two-horse uh, two race. It's going to be me and Doug Reichley. I'm an MBA. He's a lawyer. Uh, he's a career politician. I spent a career in the private sector working with children and families in the community and across the country. It's, this is not going to be uh, those two candidates are, share most of the same values, and it's going to be hard to say. This is going to be a very easy decision when it comes to what you think is important. If you think that public education is something that is, value, is valuable and valued, then I'm your candidate. Yeah. Yeah. If, you think, if you think that the environment is something to be protected, and also something to, to, to feel an ownership over that we're passing it on to generations to come, if you think that clean water and clean air is important, and it's not a, it's not a joke, it's real. And then I'm your candidate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most people know this district is uh, mostly made up of Lower McCunji Township, which is a huge township, it's one of the fastest growing townships uh, in the Commonwealth. And uh, it's also made up of Emmaus and some parts of South Whitehall. But it's also made up of some very rural areas, all the way down to Bridingsville and Bardo and some very rural communities. And to have a state representative right now, Doug Reichley, whose record is 22% on the environment, in an area like this, it should not happen. And it will not happen, but it's going to be up to us. Um, you know, you see the banner somewhere, uh, change, it used to be change in Harrisburg begins with you. And uh, now we've just changed it. The change begins with you. Because it doesn't begin with me. I'm going to do all the work in the world. I'm going to knock on 8,000 doors in the next 10 months. And I'm going to do all the things that I can do. But at the end of the day, I only have one vote at the, at the ballot box. We have 30 votes here. And your 30 votes need to turn into 900 votes. We need to get you to multiply your vote to make this election work. So how are we going to do it? Dana Bacher, how are we going to do it? Power 1000. Power 1000. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the Power 1000 is, and I'm not going to go into a great amount of detail because I've already gone past what I thought I was going to do anyway, um, but the Power 1000 is really the driving force of this campaign, and it's a way to get people involved in the campaign to make a difference, make it actionable, make it doable, make it manageable, get people involved, give them the tools they need, make it not so scary. I think some people are afraid to talk about politics, but it doesn't need to be scary. We just need to get people involved and energized and know what their choices are. Uh, the great part about the Power 1000 is that afterward we win the election, we take those people that worked on the campaign and now they're part of what we call empowerment councils. We have amazing amount of talent in this community. You know, I see Steve Gunn, who's just an amazing social worker. I've worked with him for many years at Kids Peace. He's a, quite frankly, a very brilliant guy and has a lot to offer this community. But we are missing out on tapping into that expertise in our state legislature by not engaging people in our communities who have expertise in areas. We have educators here. But do they feel like they have an impact on what happens in Harrisburg? They don't right now. 
and that's because of their state representative. Your, the state representative should be representing you more than they're representing all the big special interest uh, and big time donors. We should be representing the people who we're supposed to go and fight for in Harrisburg. And that's what this campaign is going to be about. That's what I'm going to be about. And that's what I hope to bring about in the Power 1000 is to get the great minds of our community working on our behalf. Uh, we have Steve Zakos, who now is uh, 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 getting involved in his community by being a part of the Planning Commission in, in uh, Emmaus, um, doing his part and, and making a difference in his community. We just need to give them a vehicle to do that. So we're taking the people that help with this campaign and anyone else who wants to get involved in the community to say, now you're going to be part of an empowerment council within our district and in an area that you are expert or passionate about. Because I want to go to the House floor and say, the reason I'm voting for this piece of legislation today is because I talked with Kathleen, who's an educator, and 90 other educators in my community who are part of our empowerment council, and this is why I'm voting this way. It's not just me, it's the people that I'm representing, and we're going to give them a way to have their voices heard.